Hey friends and foes, welcome to Brushwork Podcast. My name is Stephanie Scott, and today we're talking about how to stream art on Twitch. The most frequent question I get asked on the internet is how do you stream art on Twitch? Sometimes art is subbed with drawing or another more specific form of art making. I get this question from my Instagram, in my DMs, I get it on the search bar of my website. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me this question while I am live on Twitch, and I figured, you know what? It's time to answer it. And this answer, it's a long one, so buckle up. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna tell you the granular details of how I stream art on Twitch. I'm gonna tell you all about my setup, all about the software, the hardware, everything you'll need. I'm gonna tell you about my biggest tips I've learned in my two plus years now on Twitch and everything that you need to know to get started as an artist on the platform. If you've ever thought to yourself, I wonder what it's like to stream the creative process online, or I kind of want to stream my work, or can artists even make money streaming the work? This episode's for you, and also the answer is yes. <laughs> in the beginning of 2021, I moved into a bigger studio, a studio that had a reliable internet connection, and I got myself a computer that was more powerful than my old laptop. And with these two items and the stars in my eyes, I decided to try my hand at streaming. I'd been watching streamers on Twitch and YouTube for a few years at this point, watching people play games, someone making knives, chatting with people online, but I had never seen a fine artist do it. I didn't even know that there was a section on Twitch dedicated to traditional artists. I thought Twitch was only for games. It mostly is, but there's a big community of makers on the platform. The first person I met who was an artist on Twitch was actually, I met her at a drawing workshop that I was taking during the pandemic in 2020. She's in her 60s, and she said that she streamed her artwork to a small audience a couple days a week on Twitch. She said that people who watched her work bought paintings and prints, and that it was a great way to network with an audience. And honestly, through the pandemic, where I had lost all of my shows, I had lost any opportunity to meet people in person, this was like the gold for networking. The fact that she did this in her 60s blew my mind. Everyone I'd ever seen on Twitch was younger than 35, and they were never a painter. I decided that minute that I was going to get my computer hardwired to the internet, and I'm going to try a stream. There is quite a bit of setup you need to do before you can start your first stream. I'm going to tell you my current setup, and I'm going to tell you some bits about how I started. Before I go into all the things you're going to need to buy in order to stream well, I'm gonna tell you the simplest way to do it. A way that you probably already have all the equipment for right now. The simplest stream setup you can do is with your cell phone. Nowadays, you can stream on Twitch, you can do it on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok. There's so many platforms for live streaming and you can do it all from your cell phone. I did my first live stream on Instagram in 2017 from my cell phone that was balanced precariously on a stack of books with my computer off of screen playing some music. I did a top-down approach where people could see the paper in my hands, and that way I could read the comments and speak closely to the microphone. I was so focused on this setup and streaming well that I made a really bad painting, <laughs> but it was perfect. I want to say one little note for Instagram. When you stream on Instagram, the platform will promote your live stream to all your followers in waves. You can stream for an hour before you get shut down, and there is a very sensitive music copyright program that will silence you in like two seconds. It's it's quite on point. What I like about Instagram is that because it does the wave rollout of notifications, if you have, say, 300 followers, it's going to show your stream to 10 people, and then to 20 people, and then to 30 people, and it's just going to keep doing that for several minutes after you press go live. The best thing about this is that people are curious. I had people coming to that first stream that I didn't talk to in years. They were old employers, they were babysitters, friends from high school, other random acquaintances that I had. They were curious, and that's why they clicked on that notification. Instagram is a platform that's going to work for you. And Twitch is very, very different. It's not going to help you reach people. I think for the first six months, maybe five months, I had probably an audience of less than five people every single time I streamed. If you're feeling optimistic, that means that it was a very intimate audience. But if you're not feeling optimistic, that just means that it takes time to grow. And you have to use other platforms to help push people towards your Twitch stream. I think Twitch is perfect when you're starting out and trying to get the kinks out of your setup. I streamed for two people for the first week of streams I had. 
One person was my boyfriend and the other person was me on my cell phone checking to make sure everything was working. It's best if you're prepared for no one to show up to your streams. Especially at the beginning, this is a golden opportunity for you to make mistakes, to get used to being in front of the camera, and to get your art looking good on the stream. Before I dive into the hardware and the software, if you're taking notes and trying to write down all my recommendations, don't worry about it. I have everything written out for you with links, with details on my website at stephaniescott.art slash brushwork. It's under the same title as this podcast episode, How to Stream Art on Twitch, and um, it'll be there and very useful, I hope. Okay, so now let's go into the details of my live streaming setup. First, we're going to talk about hardware. The first thing you're going to need if you're looking to stream your artwork from a desktop is the desktop. You need a computer. You need a computer that can handle streaming, that can handle a camera, maybe two cameras, maybe multiple like my setup is. I use an Omen 30 liter desktop. Um, it's the GT13. It has 256 gigabytes and I have extra memory cards installed in mine. I'm running mine off of Windows 10. I got this from Amazon. It's currently $1,300. There's some that are more expensive and therefore more powerful. <laughs> you, you're going to find what you need. You might be able to run a stream without upgrading your computer to a gaming computer like this one. The stronger the processor, the better your image is going to be, but you I've seen people stream art from their laptops. I've seen people stream from, again, their cell phones. Use what you want to use and upgrade when necessary. My computer has a processor from Ryzen. It's a uh, Ryzen 5 3600 six core processor. If you were like me and you didn't know what any of these terms meant, uh, don't stress it. There's a link to it <laughs> in the description here and it just makes everything look nice and sharp. You don't have to be super technically advanced in order to stream from Twitch. You can you can simplify this to the max and get going and have things work very well for you. So no stress. Um, this is not something you need, but this I'm just going to tell you everything about my setup. I have a keyboard because you got to have those. <laughs> my keyboard is from Keychron. It's the K2. It has brown switches. I use a 75% layout, which means it has 84 keys. I have this keyboard. It was uh, $59 and you can find it on Amazon. And my mouse is from Razer and it's a wireless mouse. I have a wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse. I find it's useful because sometimes I want to move my easel setup farther away from my computer. And so I just bring my keyboard with me and I'm able to type in the chat if I need to or do commands, etc. Very handy. Okay, so the next thing you actually really need after you get your desktop set up and everything is a, a really good microphone. I use a Blue Yeti 10 and it is a professional multi-pattern condenser USB microphone. It's great. This thing cost me about $170, which I think is on the lower end for nice microphones. It's a microphone I'm using right now for this podcast. I use it for many, many different things. It has an very easy to use controls and it's just top tier. The microphone itself comes with its own little stand that sits on a desk, but I find that it picks up a lot of ambient sound if it's on my desk while I'm using the desktop at the same time. I have a freestanding microphone tripod. They usually run about $70 or so. I got mine off a friend who was looking to give it away. Check your buy nothings, check your charity shops. You, you might be able to find these freestanding mics, mic stands. Um, they're all over the place and super useful. This way I'm also able to move the microphone closer or farther away from my easel or my computer. We love it, it's very nice. After your microphone and your computer, you're gonna need some cameras. All right, so I have three cameras that I use on my streams. This is extra, you really only need one camera. You need one that's gonna show your image of what you're drawing or what you're painting and you need something that's nice and clear. I have three because I like to have one that's on my easel. I have one that shows a whole studio view. And then I have another one that's on my palette. And this way I'm always in view of my, in the cameras. I'm not like, you know, being seen when I'm painting and then suddenly off camera in the, in the void, so to speak, when I have to go, I don't know, mix more paint or something like that. I like having three. These are the three I have. Um, you're gonna, you're gonna find what works for you. 
The very first camera I got was a Logitech C922 Pro streaming camera. It's a webcam. I got it for $125, but you can get it now for less than hundred bucks. It's very affordable and very clear. I use this one for my palette camera. After I got this one, I um, I immediately set it up and I, sh I pointed it at my, my canvas and my easel and it did a good enough job. It's not super sharp. I think it's a good camera for uh, close-ups for say, if you want to have your palette put down so people can see how you're mixing color, things like that. It's pretty great for that. The sound is okay. It's just a, just a nice average one. After I got this camera, I actually got two more webcams from neighbors. Um, Cause when I was just starting out, I was like, anything free is gonna be great. Both of these ended up being trash. <laughs> They're just like really, really bad. So after I experimented with two other ones, I was thinking, okay, I, I do want a second camera. I want one that's, you know, in the studio and then another one that's on the easel on the canvas. And so I went and I hooked up my old photography camera. I had a cheap one that I got from an old boyfriend and I was like, what if I, can I stream from this? Maybe I can, it has really good focus. It has a crispy, crispy video feed. And it was great, except for the fact that it turned off every 30 minutes, unless you touched it. <laughs> Having a video feed that turns off every 30 minutes is extremely annoying. And, um, you know, so you, you gotta do what you gotta do to appease the streaming gods, I guess, but it's reusing money that you've already spent. So use items that you have already to make your stream setup work. You can always upgrade later. Okay, so my second webcam that I got for my stream was a Logitech Brio. This is a $200 or less. These things go on sale all the time. Um, and it's pretty great. It has 4K abilities, but honestly, you don't need 4K abilities. Most people watching Twitch are watching it 720 most days. It's got great quality. I use this as my daily like Zoom meeting camera, whenever I'm doing interviews with people or whatever. Logitech is great. You can get these off of Amazon. You can get them off of Best Buy, wherever. They're, they're all over the place and they're super. Super! <laughs> so at this point I had my two Logitech. I got my Brio, I have the C922, and then I had my photography camera. But I was getting so annoyed with that photography camera turning off every half hour that I was able to, uh, <laughs> that I decided that it was time to upgrade the main camera. This was the camera that I had on my easel, on my painting, and I was like, this needs to be so sharp. It needs to look really good because people are here to watch me paint. Like that's what your painting or art stream is about, right? So I invested in a Sony ZV-1 vlogging camera. It's a camera for vlogging, but it's also really great for streaming. It's got amazing, crystal clear, like graphics, they're so good, it's so beautiful, and it stays on until you tell it to turn off. <laughs> One thing about this camera is that it overheats sometimes, so occasionally in the summer I have to like cool it down. But it's uh, it's pretty great. This one I cost me just under seven hundred dollars. When I'm recording this episode on January twenty third, it's seven fifty dollars. Wait for sales. Like just put those not notices on <laughs> the internet and wait until things get cheap because they will go on sale. Okay. I also recommend if you're streaming and you have a battery powered camera, just right from the get go get extra batteries. I got an extra battery pack has two extra batteries. I keep them charged always because one battery will last me about two and a half hours of streaming. Sometimes I have to change these out midstream, but all of that is very handy to have for an extra $17. The next category I have is sound. It's important to note that any sound you have in your studio will be picked up. Things are gonna echo. That includes your music and it includes any noise you're making on your desk, like that. <laughs> Things are, things are going to get picked up. If you have a fan going, if you have neighbors that are being loud, your microphones are going to pick it up, especially if you have this Yeti mic. There are some filters you can install software-wise that help reduce these sounds, but overall, you try to, you know, cure the uh, bad noise at the source. I like to play music directly from my desktop onto the stream, and I'll talk more about what kinds of music I like later. But that means I need to have headphones on or the viewers are gonna hear the music coming out of my speakers and hear the music twice. This creates an echo and makes it sound bad. Currently I have AirPods, 
but you can use whatever wireless headphones you like. For the first three months of my stream, I didn't have wireless headphones, so I just didn't hear any of the music or sound effects that were happening on my stream for the viewers. And sometimes you gotta, you gotta suffer for Twitch kind. <laughs> At the moment, AirPod Pros are gonna cost you about $170. You can get them from Apple, you can get them from wherever, use what you got. My number one tip for Twitch, for streaming online anywhere, is that your stream should always sound better than it looks. I know this is like counterintuitive for an art stream, but if your stream sounds bad, it has an echo, people can't hear you clearly, they are much more likely to click away and go somewhere else than if it looks bad. If your video feed is a little bit grainy, but you sound really good, people are gonna hang out. I don't know why this is the case, but people are much more forgiving of bad visuals over bad sounds. Make sure you sound good, okay? Now, because we're artists here, we have to have really good lighting on our streams. The best lighting you can have on your canvas or whatever you're drawing is daylight. But sometimes we stream at night, we got jobs, we have other things, we can't always have this perfect daylight. If you can set up your easel next to a window and it is daylight, it's gonna look so good. It's gonna look amazing. But if you can't, I highly recommend these three lights. I have two soft boxes in my studio. These are really bright bulbs with a, and a casing around it that Again, it softens the light, it's a soft box. I use these in the winter slash spring months because in Seattle it gets dark at four o'clock sometimes. <laughs> and these are great for creating natural light and for helping the yellowness of my overhead lights. If you're painting in a dark room, lighting is so important to get right. For your artwork and for the viewer, try to have the surface you are making on be well lit with a daylight tint. That means like slightly colder than usual light. This is a fun way to get creative with your stream. How are you using lights? Are you bouncing them off the ceiling? Are you doing them directly on your your easel? Are you doing directly on your, say you're a still life painter on your, on your setup that way? Mess around with it. The ones I'm linking here are a set of two, plus the lights, plus the stands in this handy dandy little box for about $90. Sometimes you can get them for $50, sometimes more or less expensive. Shop around until you find something you like. My second light that I have is about a 8x10 rectangle light, and this one is all about temperature control. It's one of my favorite lights. Um, it's the Viltrox, which is <laughs> a fun word to say. Um, it has, it's a whole light kit, so it's got an LED video light panel. It goes from 330,000K to 560,000 kilowatts of light, which is the warm and cool ratios, and it it only cost me $37.19, that's so cheap. <laughs> you will need a power supply for this and also a light stand and both of those together will cost about $30, but it's so great. You can tilt this light in any direction you want. It can cast cool light, it can cast warm light. If you're taking photos of your work, like your own photos, and just for still or whatever, having this light to warm up and cool down a space is just extremely helpful. It's a plug-in, we love it. Sometimes when you're streaming, you're gonna be sitting down at your computer looking into the camera instead of painting or drawing. In this case, you're gonna want a light on your face. In this case, a ring light. I have this very small one. It's about the size of a donut. And it's great for when I'm just chatting with my, with my viewers and I want something to make my face look better. This one has a couple different color temperatures, a couple different uh, vibrancies. And um, it clamps onto my monitor, which is awesome. It was 20 bucks, I love it. Would highly, highly recommend it, this LED light. Those are the main things you need. We've covered the computer, the microphone, the cameras, the sound, and the lighting. Here are a couple of extra things that might make your life easier. I use these every single day and would highly recommend getting some. Number one is getting yourself maybe a half dozen USB extension cables. You have all these new lights and all these new microphones and all these new cameras. You're gonna wanna move them around your studio space and get the most optimal view of your artwork that you're creating on stream. Having these extension cables is gonna make your life so much easier. Just try not to trip over them. The second thing I'm gonna recommend is for your own comfort. And you're gonna pick one of these for if you are an artist who stands while they make or if you're an artist who sits while they make. If you were a standing artist like myself, I stand at my easels, 
I got myself an anti-fatigue floor mat, the kind you would might see for people who work at like a grocery store checkout line or something like that, or in a kitchen. Those are extremely, extremely useful. They save my joints. They save my feet. When you're streaming for two to three hours at a time, you want to save your body as much as you can, especially if you do this multiple times a week. I also recommend you get yourself a comfy chair. Now, this is for people who are doing a lot of sitting in front of the computer. Having a great chair will make you live longer. <laughs> I don't know if that's scientific to claim that, but it's it's so much easier on your body. My deep, dark secret is the uh, the chair I used for the first two years of streaming was a fold-up chair from Costco that my grandparents had for almost a decade, and uh, it, it had no cushion, and it was... Just metal. I was sitting on metal, and it was terrible. <laughs> Finally, this year, I upgraded to a chair. This one is a fancy one from Branch Furniture. I got it from my partner for Christmas this year, and it was, oh, it's so nice. It's beautiful. It's ergonomic. What a lovely word. So either get yourself a little floor mat to stand on so you're nice and cushy and your knees are happy, or get yourself a nice chair, because if you're going to be in this chair for hours, you want to be comfy. It's important. You're, it improves your mood, improves everything. Your art gets better. I, I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. Do, do the better chair. <laughs> okay. So as we uh, go into this next subject, we're going to start transitioning over into software you're going to need. A lot of times I get asked, what kind of music do you play on, on stream? When you're streaming on Twitch, when you're streaming anywhere? And the answer is you want to get copyright free music. You need music that's like, okay to stream. And I have a couple of sources that I like. I'm going to share them with you in a second here. But basically, if there's anything in the Creative Commons, you can use it. If there's anything that has, you know, you can pay to use on on a live stream, like Epidemic Sounds, which is awesome, um, you can use that. Look for music titles, they say copyright free or music for streamers or some sort of variant like that. Two of my favorite channels that I use from YouTube are Lo-Fi Girl and the background music channel on um and they're just they're awesome lo-fi girl is chill hop it's very it's lo-fi it's great she's she's my favorite person and um the background music channel does jazz covers and really nice uh bossa nova music i love it they're great for working they're non-verbal it's it's top tier if you're feeling real fancy you can uh look for music from like the 1920s <laughs> Get some very fun, classic, classic jazz. Anything that's out of copyright can be used on stream and you won't get flagged for it. The next thing you're going to need is software. The first thing you're going to need, it's like the most essential thing. You you must download this in order to stream on Twitch because it'll make your life so much easier. And it's fun and it's cool and it makes you like, oh yeah, I'm a streamer now. The first thing you need is OBS. OBS is a free software for streaming that can also be used for podcasting and any kind of broadcasting. You can control sounds from different sources. You can control your different angles of your camera and your overlays. You can arrange all sorts of things. You can read chat. You can get notifications. You can type in all the information from when you go live on streams. It's amazing. And getting used to it takes a little bit of messing around. I have a couple of YouTubers that tell you how to use OBS in a much more eloquent way than I can over a podcast. The first person I want to recommend is Hammerdance. He shows you how to set up scenes, sources, overlays, how to use OBS, how to live stream recaps, how to do like editing, how to do all sorts of profiles. How to, He also gives you tips on how to grow on Twitch. So, so, you know, after you get your initial setup, how to do it better. Um, you get tutorials, tech reviews, all sorts of things. It's very great. Would recommend this channel a lot. The second person is Stream Scheme. This is the person I looked at and watched a ton of videos from when I was just getting started on Twitch. He's going to give you tips on engagement, how to get more viewers, how to set up your overlays, how to do literally anything using OBS. Very, very useful. Go watch either of these YouTubers and uh, enjoy all the learning you're about to have. The next thing I recommend doing is getting something to help you stream. In this case, I'm going to talk about Stream Elements. Stream Elements is my favorite for creating overlays. That's how you make your, your stream looks fancy and get all those illustrations on the side. It gets you alerts. It gets you fun chat boxes. 
It gives you bots to help you keep the weirdos off of your back while you're trying to make art. Stream Elements is free to use and very, very handy. You can get timers, you can get all sorts of things to help you moderate your channel. It's a blessing. Would highly recommend checking out Stream Elements. There are other paid for stream support systems out there that I, I've tried in the past and haven't loved as much as I've loved Stream Elements. You're gonna like it. It's gonna give you ways to make money through donations and make merch and things like that later on. Don't worry about that at first, just for in the future. With Stream Elements, you can set up your chatbot. This will give you the ability to set timers so that your social media links might pop up every, say, 30 minutes. It can let your viewers play games with each other and many, many other cool things. Check out Stream Elements, you're gonna like them. Okay, so now that you have OBS, you've got your music, you got your, your hardware, now you have to make your profile on Twitch. And Twitch is where you're gonna set up your streaming account. Um, this is also, you can also do this on YouTube if you're thinking about streaming on YouTube. I recommend when you're making your profile that you pick a name that is either identical or as close to your other social media handles as possible. You wanna make it really easy for people to find you. One time I was looking at an artist on Twitch and their username was not even kind of close similar to, to their username on Instagram, which had 10K followers and the connection, I, you couldn't even have guessed that the, they were the same person. You don't want that. You want it to be extremely easy and convenient to find you on multiple platforms, try and get the same name. I've been using my full name for almost a decade. It's an art handle. Um, but on Twitch, I have a more casual name of Cheer Steph. A lot of artists use um, this kind of formula, which is a first name, last name, dot art, or dot studio, or something of that kind. Privacy with your name is weird when you're an artist. I feel like fine artists use their full name right from the get-go. And so I kind of just go with it. You're gonna fill in your about page and add in some basic info about your artwork. Try and be concise. Try to keep it short and sweet. I have a pretty thorough about page. It has many, many different things for you to look at and for you to do. Um, let me give you some verbal examples or you can click on my page, which is uh, twitch.tv slash cheers Steph. And um, you can see this kind of like candy bar setup I've got. So I've got a bunch of different links. Some are listen to this podcast on Spotify. Some are a wish list. Some is my Discord. I've got one for my website about the artist, my Instagram, the art book club, commissions, what materials I use, referral codes, etc. You can be as complex or as simple as you like. Look at other artists who are doing similar things as you and see what they're doing. After you make your profile and you fill out your about page, I consider putting in any chat rules you want to have for your space. Remember, when you stream, you are in complete control of your stream. If you don't like something or someone, you can change it. Use the block button as freely as you like. Some common rules that people put in their, on their page is uh, 18 plus. You don't want any minors, uh, no swearing, family friendly, be cool, etc. Later on, after you become an affiliate um, or you've been streaming for a while, you'll be able to customize channel points, emotes, subscriptions. Worry about this later. For now, just, just get streaming. All right, so now those are all the hard and software <laughs> that you need to, to use. I now just have some general tips for you as a streamer as you begin. Before you even start your very first stream, I'd go check out what other streamers are doing in your trade. I make abstract oil paints, so I'm often digging through tr the traditional art tag. Pay attention to how they set up their cameras, how they're talking to people, how they deal with tension between chatters, how they deal with no one chatting with them. I would pick streams that have less than 20 viewers to start building relationships with people. Talk to them, be active in those chats, and follow them. I wouldn't say that you're a streamer unless they bring it up. Ask them for tips, compliment their artwork, my biggest way of growing as an artist on Twitch has been building these relationships with other streamers, getting to know them, going to their streams, because eventually they might come to yours, and that's very cool. My second major tip is when you are going to stream, name your stream something catchy, and make sure you're using the art category if you're an artist. 
If you title your stream art stream, it's kind of boring and no one's going to click it. Instead, think about geometric abstract commissions. That's much more interesting. It tells you a little bit about what you're going to find on the inside and it gets, it's more creative. See what other people are doing. And I would say click on people that have about 10 to 20 viewers and see what, see what they're naming their streams. And notice what makes you want to click on someone else's stream. The next thing you're going to want to do is when you're naming your stream, below that section is going to be an option for tags. The tag system has recently been expanded on Twitch and there used to be like maybe a dozen for the art stream and now it's just like whatever you want to name it, you can tag it. I make traditional oil paintings and I have a very chill atmospheric stream. So the tags that I use with no spaces are traditional art, traditional painting, oil painting, co-working, English, LGBTQIA+, and Cozy Stream. Twitch will give you a couple suggestions of what other people are using for tags. Browse the platform, see what's popular, and what is in your niche. The next thing you're going to fill out when you are about to start your stream is notifications. As you've been streaming for a while, you're going to get people who follow you, which is awesome. So a notification will go out to them when you start a new stream, and with that is an option to have some custom text. You want to keep this short and sweet, less than five words and really succinct because people are going to be seeing this on their cell phones. I like to say, uh, hi friends, or working on my new art show, or come co-worker with me. Those are great ones. Those are like three really short ones. If you're going to say, I'm working on a new purple painting today and have some tea time, come hang. That's, that's way too long and people are going to only see the first couple of words of that. My next tip is greet everyone who comes to your stream individually. As you first start out, you're going to get not very many viewers, and that's perfect as you learn how to be a streamer. But when people do start to come in and they start being regulars, people who might come back over and over again, make sure you're saying their name to the best of your abilities. Some people have really complicated usernames and you're not really sure where the pronunciation breaks are. Ask them about their day and maybe have a question of the day. Maybe write down, you know, have you been reading any good books lately? And ask that question of anyone who comes in. That way you can start a conversation and keep it flowing. One thing I've noticed about art streams is that the people who come into the art streams are often artists. I would say like 80% of the time, they're also an artist. So I will always ask someone who's a new chatter, are you an artist? What do you make? I usually let people post links to their Instagram in my streams because I want to see their work and I'll give them a follow. This is relationship building. This is networking. It's easy to get nervous when you're talking to strangers on the internet, but with practice, you're going to get a handle on it and it'll be easier to make conversations when it feels one-sided. There is an unspoken rule on Twitch, and that is to never call someone out who is in your stream unless they say something first. If someone is lurking in your chat, they're not talking to you, but they're there and you can see them on the username list, never call them out to be like, oh, hello, username. Like if they haven't said hi, they don't want to chat. Don't don't call them out and basically tell literally everyone who's watching that they're there. It feels uncomfortable as a viewer and nobody really likes it. So if someone is in your stream and they haven't said hi or anything, don't say hi to them specifically. One thing I, I do like to do is that... um. You know, I'll say maybe once during the stream is I'll be like, hey, if you're lurking, I just want to say that I appreciate you and I hope you're having a good day. And then I go back to talking to the active chatters. The majority of the people who watch Twitch streams are lurking. Let me say that again. The majority of people who watch Twitch streams are lurking. That means they're not chatting and they're just watching. This is perfectly normal and we love lurkers. Lurkers are the bread and butter of Twitch. They get you the watch hours in and they are looking at your artwork. You like that. People don't have to chat with you and that's important that you remember that. Now there's one more thing I want to talk about before we start to end this podcast is that raids are a really great thing. If I have an audience of five people or more, I will always do a raid at the end of my stream. A raid is when you take your audience um, and you go to another stream at the end of yours and you just kind of transfer them over and you're like, go forth into the world, friends. <laughs> I try to pick people to, to raid who have similar vibes as my stream. Are they playing the same game? Are they making the same kind of artwork? Tell your audience who you're going to go 
raid. And I would also tell them to use a certain kind of fun emotes in the chat when you get to the next stream. Um, I like to tell people to use hearts if they have heart emotes and and be very nice and very cheerful to the new person that we go see. Make sure, though, after you've raided someone, that you go back and you you stop your stream. <laughs> it's it's easy to forget that you are still streaming after you do a raid, so make sure you press stop streaming. <laughs> All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is how to make money as an artist on Twitch. Some people have been asking me, they're like, can you even make any money on Twitch? The answer is yes. It depends on how much effort you're going to put into your stream and how consistent you're going to be when you stream. I always recommend streaming at least three to four days a week to keep up some sort of, you know, regularity. But there are many ways you can make money on streaming. And the most powerful one is your networking ability. When you stream, you are creating a new community of people who like your artwork, who are seeing it on the regular, seeing the process of it being made, and that's extremely powerful. The people, your viewers, who come to your streams, your regulars, every every day are the people who are going to want to buy your artwork much, much more than just a random person scrolling on Instagram. These people are building a relationship with you. They are looking to buy art. They're looking to buy prints. Maybe they aren't looking to buy it, but they will when they see an offer. This is marketing in its finest. In 2020, I lost so many just art opportunities, shows, different events I was going to go to just vanished. And all I had was my Twitch stream. It's so important to realize when you need to pivot and create something like the stream. It's extraordinarily useful. So the people who watch my stream who are regulars, who've been watching for two years now, have bought prints, they've bought tote bags, they've bought paintings, they've commissioned me for large scale pieces. I have made a lot of money from the people who watch my streams, and that's really important. In smaller ways, there are other ways to get revenue. You could get subscriptions once you become an affiliate. In becoming an affiliate, it's its own process. You can look it up on Twitch, but you have to have a certain number of followers, a certain number of stream hours, and you have to be consistent about it. But once you apply, and once they accept you, it's pretty easy to be accepted, you can start to have subscriptions. A subscription is $5 a month. You get half of it. You get two fifty dollars for every subscription that someone gives to you. Some people subscribe monthly. Some people gift subscriptions to other viewers. And when someone subscribes, they get no ads on while they're watching you. They get cute emotes, and they might get some other perks that you might define yourself. You can also get money through Bits. Bits is Twitch's currency. It's about one bit to one cent equivalency and people can give you Bits. And on my stream, I have, if you give me one bit, you get a little pop-up sound effect. And if you give me six bits, the same thing, but a different sound. Different effects happen. People can get badges next to their names that are very cute. They all have these fun little like perks and all for a couple cents. You can also get subscriptions through Amazon Prime. People who have an Amazon Prime can give you a subscription every month because they subscribe to Amazon, which is awesome. If you are savvy, you can get brand deals. People who want you to talk about their products while you're on Twitch. I haven't done any of these myself, but I know people who have done it before and have done it successfully. There are many ways to get money on Twitch, but the networking is the, is the most useful one. Networking, getting people to look at what you're making, getting people's eyes on your work as you're making it, that relationship, that's going to be your biggest money maker. I always say to young artists and people who are creative that you never know who's going to buy your product. You never know who's going to buy your creation. They might, you might meet someone and they might not be interested immediately, but three years later, they might be commissioning you to make a big painting for their living room or for their office or whatever it is. As you cultivate good relationships and you cultivate your brand through live streaming, it's going to get easier and you're going to become more profitable. It's awesome. That was a lot of info and I hope you found it helpful. Let me know if you have any other questions about streaming. Um, about streaming art or any other sort of things. And if you start streaming because you've seen this guide or you've listened to it, please tell me because I want to know what you're creating and I want to see your streams. So, you know, spread the word. Let me know. I want to hear it. All right. 
friends and foes, you've been great. I hope you have a good day, make good choices, and see you next week. Bye.